Hi, in this video, I'll be talking to WordPress expert Rich Tabor about five exciting features that are coming to a future version of WordPress. My name is Dave Smith, Gutenberg core team member and full-time WordPress contributor, and I'm excited to bring you this interview with Rich Tabor. Welcome back to the channel, Rich. It's great to have you join me again. Ah, hey, everyone. Thanks, Dave, for having me on. <laughs> oh, it's great to see you. Well, I think most people, you will be a pretty familiar face, but there will be some viewers who maybe are newer to WordPress who don't know who you are. So would you mind briefly introducing yourself, saying what you do and what role you play in the creation of WordPress? Yeah, so I've um, been at WordPress for um, close to 12 years now, and it's... Um near and dear to me. And I started off as a designer, I quickly moved into some development, uh, but then uh, dove right into product um, at GoDaddy and now at Automatic, uh, where I'm a core contributor to WordPress. And uh, I mostly help unblock folks and move the product forward. Well, it's great to have you with us. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to go through all the features that are coming up in a future version of WordPress. Are you ready to dive in? Yeah, man, let's do it. Excellent. Well, first things to say is um, that most of the information we've gleaned in this video has come from um, looking at what landed in WordPress 6.5 or what didn't land in WordPress 6.5 in some cases, and also uh, reviewing the GitHub tracking issues for um, the major focus areas of the Gutenberg project. And these are all available on GitHub. And some of the links for those we'll put in a pinned comment down below. So if there's anything where you want more detail or want to dive in further all you need to do is go to that pin comment click on the links and you'll be taken to the tracking issue for each one of these features so another thing to say is we don't have any information yet about the next wordpress release which is wordpress 6.6 .6. i believe the release squad is still being put together i believe the release date is something like in in july early july so we're still we're still quite away from that now um, but I think it's safe to say that because some of these tracking issues have quite a lot of activity on them, it seems that these ones are top of mind. And so these are the ones we're sort of most excited about. So Rich, the, the ones that I, I think we want to talk about today are the new index views for the site editor, the overrides to sync patterns, and that's something that didn't make it into 6.5, uh, composing uh, templates and pages with patterns via a zoomed out view. Um, section specific styles and finally we're going to have a look at grid layout and the sub grid support uh, how are you feeling about those features rich yeah you know i feel pretty good you know, like you said a number of these have actually been in the works for you know spanning a couple release cycles and um, we're really at this point where we're leaning in on the editing experience so the you know the overrides the composition with patterns the section styles like the grid layout like all of those really touch you know the the folks who are building sites or designing folk, sites and really leveling up their experience of using the wordpress editor so i think this is going to be um, a good year for wordpress really leaning in on all of these areas absolutely i think it's, it's there's plenty in there that's going to be really exciting um when we find out when that lands in which release we don't know but it's certainly looking like a, a great year for WordPress. So let's kick off then with our features rundown. And we're going to be diving into each one in a little bit more detail based on what we know from the tracking issues. Um, hopefully, we're going to be able to have a look at a, a few demos as well. Um, but we're going to kick things off with uh, looking at advancing new views in the site editor. And uh, my understanding from reading around the tracking issues is this is all connected to the new work to sort of modernize uh, the WordPress admin experience. And we're kind of starting to, we, we have a high level overview, a vision of what that new admin experience might look like in a tracking issue. And this, this focus here is uh, about adopting some of the new UX paradigms that are outlined there for some of the key content types such as pages, patterns, and templates. And when you when you see those listed in WP Admin, have I got that right, Rich? Yeah, so the list views throughout WordPress, um, including the WordPress Admin, um, are composed of data, right? And WordPress is a CMS. So these views, um, whether or not they evolve completely into the new admin experience or keep enhancing the site editor for the time being, uh, will both be foundational for that new WordPress experience. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to you know, continuing to evolve these views and also uh, making sure that we build them with extensibility in mind so that plugins can build on top of these just like you can within the classic WordPress admin experience. 
Yeah, I agree. And it's going to be very important that, you know, if most of the work going forward with, with people building sites, you're going to be within the editor, aren't you? So, And these views are accessible within the editor without having to leave the editor experience. So it, it just starts to speak to a more seamless um, UX for people who are making websites as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm certainly excited to see what that would look like. Have we um, got the ability to have a quick uh, demo of that and have a have a look at what it what it looks like? Yeah. So, so Gutenberg has an experiment that have enabled so that you can see some of these and, and some of them I've actually shipped in the previous WordPress release. But one of the new views here, if you click to pages, you can see we have this kind of three column layout where your your site canvas moved to the right. And now we have pages on the left that you can filter through. And we could even go through here and select a different layout. So let's say if we wanted a grid layout, we can just now see this grid. We're using the featured images. Um, potentially, this could use page previews. So actually see in your page as a block preview within each of these here. You can set, uh, you can sort them by different values, set the number of fields, say you don't want status or author on here, yeah. and even set the items per page. And um, and in some of these views, you can even create and save these. So you can save this as a custom view. And then every time you would go to this pages view, you could see your pages, however you designed them. Uh, the other views, like templates, is similar. It's just a different format. So we have a different uh, layout configured with grid sorting it by template um, with the author and description fields, but we can make this simpler just by removing some of those there mm -hmm. and then potentially saving this in the future. Uh, so I really see this as, um, here we see even go to list here, and now we're back to list. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And the idea is that uh, plugins can leverage this uh, potentially anywhere in the WordPress admin experience that you have lists, uh, that list data potentially could leverage this exact same uh, mechanism. So this sort of, these sort of, data views will be potentially in the future available for your custom post types, for example, if you had a, a plugin yes. that registered, I don't know, well, I suppose an e-commerce plugin is a good idea, like one that registered products, you'd be able to have, take advantage of these views, have these advanced filters maybe set up so particular sh shops or, or sellers could have a particular view for, you know, a, a particular filters on their products and things like that, and they could save those, and then every time people who admin the, the shop need to come in, they can just click on the left and it will automatically filter by those values. Yeah, that's, yes. um, I mean, that's a pretty yeah. powerful tool. Um, so the, yeah, Pages is um, obviously already in, uh, we're looking at the Gutenberg plugin right now, aren't we? The Which is the sort of uh, the bleeding edge, where the bleeding edge works happens on the editor. Um, so we've all, already got those. Do we, ha to see this, do we have to enable an experiment or is it already, um, is it just uh, already by default yeah. active? Yes, you do have to enable it. Uh, so within the Gutenberg, uh, when you install the plugin and activate it, you'll see a Gutenberg uh, menu item here. And then within here, oh, actually, is it? Maybe it's. Yeah, maybe it's already passed. The yeah, maybe it's already passed page. the experiment. Yeah, I think custom data views. Time. Yeah, custom data views is actually, show you what that is. So it's the next level. It's where you can save and, and actually create views. So I can name this. Uh, favorite pages. And when I go into this view here, I can set, set it up however I want. And that obviously doesn't work very great. This is very experimental. Yeah, exactly. Um, we can set our own filters, set our own, uh, what how we want to sort these items, and then save this view as its own view so that instead of just seeing all pages, you would have your favorite pages listed here. Right, um, so that's but, really powerful. Right, so the pages, custom views is what's in the experiment, but this page is, is in Gutenberg right now to where you can see it. Right, so if you've got the Gutenberg plugin active, you can start experimenting with this and playing around with it, seeing how it feels. Again, as Richard's saying, it's, it is um, still pretty experimental and it's uh, there are a few bugs and edge cases, but in general, you can really start to get a feel for how um, the new sort of WordPress admin experience will will play out. And I think we have, um, we have like this overview issue, don't we, for the phase three? of the admin, uh, which we'll link down below in the comments. And on, and on that, on that, there is a, a Saxon Fletcher, who's a, a WordPress designer, has posted a really good overview of how uh, the, the WordPress admin could evolve to incorporate these views. And I think anyone who's interested in this, anyone who's interested in the future of how WordPress admin could evolve, then definitely go and check out that issue, which is linked down below in the comments, and, and you'll have much more information there. 
Okay, Rich, anything else that we want to say about um, advancing new views or are we happy to move on to our next feature? Uh, I would just say, give it a try and leave some feedback because um, uh, we're at the point now, especially for, for folks who have their own table views uh, for custom plugins, third-party plugins, uh, to lean in and really explore what this looks like because this is this could be the experience that your plugin could eventually leverage. Mm, yeah, test, mm. test and feedback. Very important. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to our next feature uh, in this overview, and that is overrides to synced patterns. Now, this is a feature that was um, originally slated for WordPress 6.5, which is the current stable major release of WordPress at the time of this recording. However, it didn't quite make it in. And the reason for that is because there were some concerns around the UX of how you define which blocks within your pattern are overridable. So um, when you're talking about overrides to sync patterns, what we're talking about is if you define a pattern with certain bo blocks in it, for example, images, uh, headings, paragraphs, um, you might want to use that pattern over different pages on your site, but you might want the content of that pattern to be different, but the design and the layout to stay the same. And then this is what that allows. You can mark certain blocks as allowing their content or their attributes to be overridable. Um, so Rich, why do you think this work is uh, important? And do we have demos for this yet? I think we can probably see something at this stage. Yeah, let me share the screen here. I don't foresee this um, uh, missing 6.6 .6, uh, later in uh, a couple months. So um, let me demo it real quick. So the way you can create a pattern, so I just have a group block here. I'm going to create a pattern. We're going to name it uh, Hero Area. And I'm just going to create it as a synced pattern. So from this view here, you go to Edit Original. And now I'm editing the actual pattern itself. Yeah. And when you're edit editing a pattern, you can select some elements like buttons, um, headings, paragraphs, and even images, and go down here to advance, and then click Enable Overrides. Um, so like um, so like we said, overrides are changes that you make to a block that can be um, modified throughout different instances of a synced pattern. So I'm going to name this uh, title, and I'm going to name this one down here just uh, Description. We're going to save this, and then we're going to go back to our our actual homepage. Now this is still the pattern. Uh, you, and now you can see that as I click this, I have this like, little indicators that have showed me like, hey, something's editable now. So if I go into this pattern here, I'm going to actually duplicate it too. If I go into this, I can change this to say a commitment to innovation. And let's perhaps change the name to WordPress. Like it. All right, and if I go back to this one I duplicated, I'm still seeing the original values from my pattern. Now, this one has not been changed, and this one has been changed. And so this allows you to have the same pattern, but with different content inside of it. So if I go back to my original, if I do make changes to this one pattern here, so let's say I set the background color to this light blue, you'll see the light blue applied to this one and also to the other one. So my contents still are different, but now my styles are the same. So it is a way to really flex the capabilities of patterns and allow a more um, extensive WordPress solution across your site, not just for hero areas or menus, but also testimonials, something that you might have a repeatable across your site, um, or even call to actions. You might have different button values and different button call to actions on different pages, but you can use the same pattern um, across your footer of the site, perhaps. Um, so I think it's really it's really an interesting um way to to level up what we already have without adding too much complexity um, in really what we're building. I think, as as you said before, it'd be very important that people do provide feedback on this feature because there was this um, the concern about the user experience. So um, if you've got any feedback about how um, you enable those overrides and whether it's clear enough what is or what isn't overridable, then please look down below in the comments where we'll have a link to the tracking issue and you can test this out early with the Gutenberg plugin and um, provide feedback to the contributors who are actively working on this feature to make sure that it works for, for you and serves the purposes that you require. That's great, Rich. Thanks for that That's demo there. Mm -hmm. um, we're ready to move on, I think, to the next feature that we've got to look at today. And that okay. is um, one I'm excited about, which is composing content or pages or templates uh, with patterns, focusing on patterns using a zoomed out view of the editor. 
Um, my understanding is that the idea behind this is to sort of try and uh, allow people to compose these pages without having to focus on the sort of granular level of using blocks and having to move things around and adding group blocks and things like that. Instead, creating these pages out of predefined patterns that are available. Yeah, you know, I think, uh, let me share my screen here. Um, you're right on point. Uh, you know, we have a way to, for themes to provide starter page content, essentially, um, in the post editor where you can add a new page and you get, you know, maybe uh, 2024, I think, has like maybe 10 different uh, starter patterns that are com complete pages that are composed from that you can start with. Um, and, you know, in that, it's interesting that a theme can provide like some some patterns to start with. But one thing that I keep thinking about is like, how do we actually make it to where like a theme can provide the patterns, which it already does, and you can design that page with those patterns. Of course, today you can open up a brand new page, open up the inserter, search through patterns and, and search, through them, search through them and add them one at a time and try to go back into the editor and rearrange them and reorder. Um, but I think that there's something else there that really can provide you know, a bird's eye view of your site where you can select patterns, you can reorder them, you can potentially shuffle them, you can apply styles to each one individually instead of having to be so granular all the time. So this is you know, quite a bit farther out exploration wise, but some of the ideas that we're thinking about um, is being able to one, engage zoom out mode when you go to patterns and select a category. So if I select the about category here, yeah. I have zoom out mode engaged. And now on like each one of these here, yeah. yeah, exactly. And um, what's nice about this is that I can select now each individual top level. Technically, it's a top level block that I'm selecting. It's not, you know, the editor doesn't really know that these are patterns or not. It's just a group block that I'm selecting on each one of these, mm -hmm. uh, which is interesting because then now I can you know, say I wanted to delete this whole section. I can delete it. And there's no no finicky trying to find the right group block to delete. There's um, I could easily rearrange. I can click this whole section, rearrange it, and now bring up this uh, testimonial. Um, and potentially in the future, we could style this whole section. Like perhaps in this toolbar, there's a, a control for applying block style variations. Um, we can, right now we have this inserter here, which um, essentially just opens up uh, when it when it's um, it already engaged in zoom out, it doesn't, it doesn't do it correctly. But when you're not, it does open up like a small inserter. But I, I'm wondering if there's some way to expose the patterns over here on the left a little bit better when you're trying to engage with inserting instead of using uh, just the inserter from when you're uh, zoomed out like this here. Uh, so there's some some ways yes. to try to connect a lot of these dots and and make this feel like a natural in and out of granularity when you're editing rather than just a different way to look at your site. Um, so I, I think there's something here uh, I would like to keep pushing to see like how we can further refine this. Uh, but I'm I'm curious of what other folks think too. I know on, on Twitter we've shared a little bit about this, and you know, there's been a lot of positive engagement there. But I do want to get folks to to try it out. Uh, currently, there is an experiment in Gutenberg which just adds this this control up here. Uh, but in Gutenberg, the patterns uh, uh, patterns tab appears already connected to Zoom Out. The experiment yeah. itself will probably uh, be be removed pretty soon uh, because it's just just this one random control. And we might find a better placement for it. Perhaps it goes in here where you can set zoom out to 50% or back to 100. Maybe there's some way to connect the dots there as well. Um, but I am curious what folks think about, particularly about having patterns engage zoom out mode uh, within the editor. Yeah, it seems, like a, it seems like a really nice experience for quickly building out a, a template. Um, I think yes. we, can we even shuffle patterns today? I think we probably can, can't we? Yes, uh, the way it works um, in, in Gutenberg right now is if you've inserted a pattern and it, it will reference that pattern's category and you could shuffle between that category. Um, so if you're, you know, if the if the theme kind of chunks all the patterns into one category, it's not going to work as effectively. There's some, I think, some guardrails we have to put around the, the logic there. Um, but the idea is that you can shuffle through, like, I think this is going through all the about patterns right now and to find one that you like. Um, I think in the future it would be really cool if you can shuffle through patterns, but then maintain the contents of, of your site, especially if mm -hmm. it's something that you've edited. So if I've edited this this group here and I and there was still a shuffle functionality because I inserted this pattern, then perhaps my heading and my my paragraph and my button are always present on the next one, just maybe in a different layout. I think that that's something so quite a bit further down the road, but like really interesting to think about. Like I can push shuffle and. I see my contents moving in around in a couple of different variations just to try 
different ideas with the same thing, or if you wanted something completely different, there needs to be a way to do that too. Yeah, that would be a super powerful feature. And I can I can think of ways, maybe block bindings that could be used to achieve something like that yes. in the future. So that is exciting. Yeah, I can see where this will go. So um there'll be a link down below in the in the pinned comment to the tracking issue for zoomed out view. And um that will have links to the pull requests um, that are currently ongoing. But you, as long as you've got the Gutenberg plugin installed and you've enabled that experiment from the Gutenberg menu on the left hand side within Web, wordpress admin you should be able to play with this right now today um you could even spin up a site very very quickly with this using uh, wordpress playground if you haven't come across that yet um that's very simple to use and we'll leave a link to that down below in the comments as well and the next one we're going to talk about today is section specific styles and i feel like this is has got a nice synergy with um composing patterns with zoomed out view because when you're doing when you're when you're composing with, with uh, patterns with the zoomed out view you are very much thinking about the top level sections of your content of your template and this section specific styles really um really uh, syncs well with that because what it is is the ability to define and install entire sections of a page without the need to manually reapply those same sets of styles over and over and over again yeah um here let me share my screen i think um I'm really curious about how folks perceive this. I think it's a, a massive improvement uh, from what we have today. Um, they're essentially block style variations, right? So we have yeah. block style variations over here on the right where you can select different ones. Now we we could already make four of these, for example, for the group block today. But what's different is that now you don't have to worry so much about specificity. Like if you're going to style a whole group and every piece of its contents inside of it, um, or even stack them together. So if you had a top layer group with one style and then a smaller group inside of it with a different style, you can do that now. And then two, you can also define these in theme.json variations for multiple blocks at a time. So if you see here, I'm assigning uh, this variation of light to group columns and column uh, because they're all wrapper blocks. I wanna be able to style them the same way. And so I'm defining my styles one time just like anywhere else, I'm setting the color um, here. I'm styling specific blocks. If I want to use ref values, I can. I can even reference this particular variation's values. So I'm saying this needs to just match the same as the text color. And uh, you can style elements all the same, um, which is really nice because you're not, we're not introducing anything new here. We're just extending the current functionality so that there's no new ideas to learn. It's just uh, making block style variations much more meaningful. And I'll show you here why this matters so if i go here i just have you know this ui might adapt a little bit but i'm going to apply a dark one here you see my text is already applied to use the white color a little bit um, lighter blue and then dark blue here these styles i pulled from um, wordpress.org so it's going to be similar to what you'll see there use a light one here and down here maybe we'll use the second dark one and just to add some variance um, no normally you probably wouldn't have all three of these placed one right after the other, but I, I like to show it like this. Um, if I go into zoom out mode, I can see them now at a, at a top level view. And within colors, I can change my colors to say this blue one here. And now you see the dark one is now this like navy color. This one's a little bit uh, toned down and this is a different color blue. I can go into this style here and now everything's red. The dark is a little bit darker here. All these colors are persisting because each of these variations have defined their own idea of what dark means or what light means. Um, so that you can think about like patterns in the directory, the pattern directory can all have individual classes for like is style light or is style dark or whatever that naming convention ends up being. So that when you view those patterns they, and when you insert them on your site, they already your theme already adapts and styles those groups as uh, necessary. And some some themes you know, and you can think of each of these as individual themes even, but some themes might have less um, color variations, like maybe there's a more minimal vibe. So this one here has a dark and a light. So this one is just omitted, like there's nothing there because it's not, this theme is intended to be more minimal. Um, it doesn't need to have three different color swatches for each of these here. I think this is, you know, particularly interesting on the theme front, on the creative front, um, for the, the agencies and builders when you're building out um, styles like branded styles for your site and um, so you can go through and make sure that like hey like when you want to design your your this new section here just pick one of these styles and call it a day that's all you have to worry about and if you want to change these styles later it's in theme.json so you can just you can literally just change them 
Um, eventually, there's going to be a UI for them as well within Global Styles, uh, just like you can modify the outline button block. Um, so there'll be a UI to say like, like the, you know, light should be these values, and they're all coming from your theme. So it doesn't matter what what actual um, slug values you use for any of these colors or anything, because these are all just defined within the actual JSON. It's just referencing whatever colors it wants to. Uh, so it just makes it much more portable, much more uh, friendly across uh, your site, but also shareable across WordPress as well. What about typography? Does, th does that come into this as well, or is it just color? It's, it's actually anything you want. So these, I, I've experimented just with color for now, just to keep you know the variables uh, minimized, but it works yeah. just as well, like with any any declarations of style within this variation. So you could have like bigger text, you could have you know like more italic, you can have a totally different font. you can you can pretty much think of these as many themes within your one theme, uh, different different combinations of colors, different combinations of typography. Uh, within the one theme we do have a tracking issue for this one as well and that will be linked down below in the pinned comment if you take a look at that there is um i believe an ongoing um pr that implements some of this work i don't believe that is yet merged into into gutenberg into the gutenberg plugin am, am i am i right there rich i think it's still something that's being worked on Yes, yeah, so it's just being ironed out, uh, making sure that there's no performance loss, that there's uh, it's, it's efficient and uh, yes. and still you know maintains the uh, the flexibility that we're looking forward to. Um, and another another quick thing I thought was interesting is you can, you know, as we can style all the subsequent blocks within it, you could potentially style an entire template. So you could say like, I want this whole template to be dark, mm -hmm. or I want so you could just style this whole thing all at once. It's kind of nice. Like it's interesting. Yeah. And you can go into each individual one and then apply a different one. So it's it's really wild to, to think of like, the, I'm really curious, like what folks are going to be building with this. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really cool. Well, if you're excited about this and you've watched this and thought, I want to try, try this out, then hopefully by the time you've watched this video, it, you might find that this is available in the latest version of the Gutenberg plugin. Um, if not, there will be a link to the tracking issue, as I said, in the comments, and you can click on that and see what the latest status of this is. But um, certainly within the next, I would have thought the next month or so, this should be ready for, you know, sort of real world testing with um, with people who want to download the Gutenberg plugin. So do, do check this out, have a play around with it, see what you can create in your theme or in your website and, and let contributors know what works, what doesn't work, what edge cases you found and what other features you'd like to see. Right, so the next feature and our final feature that we're going to discuss today is the support for grid layout and subgrid on blocks. And principally, this is for the group block. Um, this is something that's actually already shipped in, in WordPress as it stands, but there's the, the UI for it is uh, very basic and the subgrid support isn't there. And there's also in um, currently in the works an experiment with interactivity around grid. Um, but this is one that's particularly difficult to uh, understand unless you have a way to visualize it. And so we can do that now if I can share my screen. What we have here is um, 2024 and we have this um, section here with columns. And in traditional current WordPress, we, we, we have this columns block and we say how many columns we want. And we have to define sort of separate rows for each one. So there's actually two column blocks here to create this sort of grid of grid of items, which is which is okay, but it's a bit a bit clunky. And when things start to go down to mobile size, you know, things break at different points and, and sometimes it looks a bit looks a bit clunky, really. It should be a single block ideally. And this is kind of what the grid block is going to give us the power to do, hopefully. So if I show a demo of how we can use the grid block today, if I add before here and I'm going to add a grid block and with our grid block by default we have nothing in the first item on the grid but we can see there are um, if I select the grid block we can see there's sort of three columns already set up and it's automatically going to lay the columns out based on my content so if I add for example a um, paragraph probably a paragraph block is easiest for now and what I can try and do is copy and paste these blocks uh, into this grid and first thing I need to do is group them together. Uh, we've missed off some of the text, so I'll just copy that over now as well. And this is the first item in our grid. 
But what I can now do is duplicate these items. And there's the first three. And if I select those three again and duplicate all those, then we're getting very close to having the layout that we had previously for columns. I'm going to adjust the layout to be wide width. And I think the spacing probably will need adjusting as well, because we're going to get quite a lot of blocks on a row. So as you see, as I adjust the minimum column width, it automatically reflows into the grid without having to do anything. So I'm not having to micromanage this at any real level. I'm just saying, what is the minimum size I want for these items? And it will do it for me. And if I go back up to the grid, then I should be able to also say what sort of block spacing I want between these items. I can increase that to look a bit more like it does for the other one. And we can start to see how it looks very, very similar to the one we had before. And obviously the text is not quite the right length. Then we can see quickly, we've been able to recreate that layout, but using a, a grid. Now, the new uh, experiment that's happening with this is also really interesting. So if we click on this one, you'll see that the, the subgrid has the sort of drag and drop um, or like slider things. And we can we can actually drag them over like this. And you can start to see how it allow us to position things on the grid by just resizing them as we go. And this is called the interactivity experiment. And it's very, uh, it's still got uh, a number of UI quirks, but you can see how, as I adjust the sort of screen size and things change, how it starts to reflow things automatically into a suitable layout. And I'm not having to micromanage this. I'm not having to say at this screen size, put this here, put this there. It's just reflowing. And um, this, this functionality is baked into web browsers. It's part of the CSS specification. So the, the technology allows us to lay things out and, des and design things on a page. Um, but what we've done is basically make, what contributors have done is make that available for blocks and specifically the grid variation of the group block. Um, so you can use this today. Again, it is under an experiment at the moment. Uh, but if you enable that experiment in the Gutenberg settings menu, then you can start playing with this today and you can start seeing what things you can create. You can create galleries, for example, very easily. You can do the column layouts, as I've shown here, but you could get into more advanced layouts as well, which is what the grid block is intended to do. And I'm particularly excited about this, um, the ability to sort of drag and resize these items on the grid manually by this, because I think it's much easier to create these things visually than it is to, and you can see there are a few quirks, but creating them visually like this is much, much easier than doing it uh, using sliders and buttons and things in this sidebar. So um, yeah, yeah, this 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 feature is very powerful. What do you think about it, Rich? Yeah, I, th I think it's super interesting, especially like as you're you know, previewing the mobile and a tablet view and you didn't have to do anything and they showed up like what you would expect. Uh, which is kind of nice. Um, I think that there are, you know, like you said, like some, like that's like super cool. I would just did that for you. Um, there's some, definitely a few quirks in the experience mm -hmm. side of things like with the interactivity side, um, for sure. Um, but, but it really is interesting. I think that this could be the paradigm that we build with more often than with columns and with groups, even like this, this grid might be the, the de facto choice for, you know, a lot of folks who are building, you know, more expressive combinations of, of, images and text uh, throughout their websites. Absolutely. And it's extremely powerful. And I'm, I'm excited to see what people make of it. Uh, if you want to find out more about this feature, then check out the pinned comment down below where we'll have a link to the tracking issue that is um, tracking what's happening on this feature. And you'll be able to see how you can test it out and what feedback contributors are looking for specifically. We've come to the end of our features list that we've been reviewing today, Rich. Um, they look super great i'm so excited to see when these land in a future release of wordpress um if you had to pick one feature from this list that you're most excited about what do you think that would be oh, man that's tough um <laughs> putting you on the spot I mean, coming coming into this today i would say section styles um, i think that that is a sleeper you know feature that is going to unlock a lot for folks uh, but when you started sharing the grid interactivity Piece. And, you know, I've been working a little bit on that, but now seeing someone else demo it is really, you know, it's eye opening. It's like, okay, yeah, there's something here that's interesting. And I love cracking the challenging problems. So like that, I guess that one has me the most curious right now. Yeah. 
Yeah, super exciting. Well, it's interesting you say that because I was going to say right back at you with the um, <laughs> section specific styles because I some of the stuff you showed today, I wasn't aware of and I've dived into this in, in quite a bit of detail as well. So yeah, um, I think uh, both of these features that we've demoed are certainly two of the most exciting ones. This work is under development right now. So if you'd like to leave any feedback, please check out that pin comment down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button. It really helps. And of course, if you want more content about WordPress, the blog editor and what's coming next, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know about new videos with uh, folks like Rich and great contributors to WordPress. Well, Rich, it's been fantastic to have you with me here again to learn all about the features that are sort of potentially coming to a future WordPress release. Where can people follow you, find you, see what you're up to, and all that kind of thing? Well, I, I have the coolest domain in the world, so <laughs> rich.blog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's fun, but uh, I like to blog and write a lot. I have a, a newsletter I'm shipping every two weeks called Shaping WordPress, and it's just about um, a lot of these ideas that are, are shaping up. Um, some of them, you know, won't ever make it into core, but they're just big ideas I'm thinking about. Other ones are uh, things that have been, you know, baked and baking for a long time. So it's uh, interesting to get more feedback and more eyes on those ideas. And um, I, I spend a lot of time, maybe too much, on X and Twitter. So um, I'm Richard at underscore Tabor there. And um, you feel free to always reach out and uh, or on Slack, on anywhere you can find me. I, I like to chat with folks. Great. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm also sub I'm subscribed to that newsletter. And the first issue of that came out uh, very recently, I think just, just last week. And I can personally right. say that it is an excellent read. And if you haven't always subscribed to it, make sure you go to rich.blog and sign up because you're, you're going you're gonna to be missing out if you don't. So make sure you go there. OK, excellent. That's it for this video today. Thank you for joining us again, Rich. And I will see you next time. Goodbye. Awesome. Thanks, Dave.